Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and welcome back to the history of the elephants. This time we'll be going over Elephantoidae, elephants and their two closest related families. This group is distinguished from the Gompatheres and other parts of Elephantida by the shared hyroid characteristics. The hyroid, for those curious, is a horseshoe shaped bone situated in the mid line of a mammal's neck. Touch your upper neck and you will find the bone on yourself. Go ahead and try it. Back on topic, there were three families that have made up Elephantoidae. Anacidae, Stegodontidae, and Elephantidae. For this video, we will be covering the first two families. The third will be covered briefly at the end. Anacidae, which is awkwardly named after its first discovered member, which itself was named after the legendary king of Rome, Anacus Marcus. This group was very closely related to modern elephants. Originally considered part of the Gompatheres in the past, these tetralophodont quote-unquote Gompatheres are now considered a distinct family that lived from the Miocene to early Pleistocene, 16 to 0 0.03 million years ago. Anacus is the most well-known genus. Its most distinctive features is its extremely large tusks, which are a 13 feet in length. Now, I must state that the tusks are not the longest. Zygolophodon wins that. Anacus, however, had proportionally the longest tusks because it was only slightly smaller than the modern elephant and with much shorter legs. As such, proportionally, it's much longer. Its molars were more cusp-like, kind of similar to tapers and pig teeth. Anacus used these to eat from trees and shrubs, digging out tubers in the forest floor. It died out when the forests gave way to grasslands. The next most well-known genus was Tetralophodon. It existed from the late Miocene to the middle Pliocene epochs, approximately 10.9 million years. It had four tusks. For that reason, it was classified with the Gompatheres until it was discovered to be different from them. In life, it was 8.5 to 11.3 feet tall at the shoulder and 10 tons in weight. Its teeth indicate a diet of large fruits and vegetables. It actually appeared in a game I bought recently called Odyssey, the story of mankind. But that's a topic for a different video. This was a very successful genus that spread to Europe Africa, and Asia. Specimens first thought to be found in America were moved to a new genus. That genus was the similarly looking Pedialophodon, another very similar species that is otherwise little known. Another very similar genus was Paratetralophodon. Morelia was the last anacid living from 1.8 million to just 300,000 years ago in the Pleistocene. It was from the Americas, specifically Navajo County in Arizona and Briscoe County. All told, the Nackets were an obscure yet interesting part of the elephant family tree. Now let's go over the second family, the Stegodontidae. The Stegodontidae had less genera than its fellow families, but made up for this in success in species number. We'll be covering some of these now. Stegolophodon was the first genus and is believed to have evolved in a Stegodon 
It can be distinguished from its evolutionary successor by its smaller size and position of lower tusks, which were lost in Stegodon. Most noteworthy was a dwarf species in Japan. This genus lived from Miocene to Pleistocene. Overall, it's very interesting how elephants often lose their lower tusks. I mentioned this in a previous episode, but I thought I'd point it out now, because in fact, this happened again, but we'll get to that. Its evolutionary successor, Stegodon, was even more successful, spreading across Asia and parts of East and Central Africa. Stegodon was one of the largest proboscideans, with Stegodon zedonski having an old male known to be 12.7 feet tall at the shoulder and 12.5 tons in life. Fossils of a small specialized species, Stegodon aurorae, have also been found in Osaka Plains in Japan. Meanwhile, on the other side of the coin, there were numerous Stegodon species that became dwarfs. Because Stegodon could swim, much like modern day elephants, Stegodon could spread across Southeast Asian islands and Japan very easily. This travel was aided by reduced sea levels that caused by the Ice Age that connected many of the islands, and those it didn't connect did make the passage much shorter. Stegodon sondari was the first dwarf species that dated from the early Pleistocene on Flores, known from 900,000 years ago. It was also the smallest dwarf species of Stegodon, at a height of 3.9 feet and a weight of 660 pounds, which is smaller than most cows, in fact. This species was replaced by the medium-sized species Stegodon florensis, which is believed to have descended from Stegodon trigonocephalus, which managed to swim their way. Very interesting that the species named after the island isn't the smallest. This larger species eventually replicated the dwarving evolution and evolved into its own dwarf form, the subspecies Stegodon florensius insularis, which was 6 feet and 2 tons in size, not quite as small. It was believed to have been hunted by the real-life hobbits on Flores Island, along with the Komodo dragon. Quite a strange place it was. In the island of Suwannese, there was a distinct dwarf species, Stegodon sumpiorensis, a third species from central Java, Stegodon semidensis, was also a dwarf. In real life, despite the size variation, they very closely resembled elephants due to living in warm climates, thus lacking the need for a thick mammoth-like fur coat though populations in tempered zones might have been slightly more hairy. The most obvious distinction would have been the fact that the tusks grew so close together, as well as so thick in older males, that the proboscideans couldn't fit their proboscis between them. This made them more restrictive than modern elephants, though it didn't really hurt them that much. Other differences that Stegodon had in comparison to modern elephants is that their teeth, while rigid similarly to them and different from Mastodon's, they were still very low and relatively primitive. Furthermore, Stegodon had a more robust and compact skeleton compared to the elephants and mammoths. Why such a successful genus die out, you may ask? Well, apparently it's complicated. Climate change may have stressed the genus on the mainland. It had previously outcompeted Cenomacedon due to superior teeth for eating leaves. However, Stegodon was still a primarily forest browser, meaning it was less flexible than the modern-day grass-loving Asian elephant, which could have adapted more readily to the spread of grass. This isn't to say Stegodon's extinction is completely climate-related. Humans very likely wiped out the various dwarf island species. It's just that on the mainland, the situation is very muddled, and it's very unlikely that there was a single cause to its extinction. It is believed to have finally died out in the late Pleistocene, with possible Holocene small pocket populations surviving to just 4,100 years ago, which is actually relatively recent. 
So ends the tale of the Stegodonts and this episode. Next time we'll be going over the elephants. No, I'm not lying. I'm not doing clickbait. You see, Elephantidae is actually literally the family of elephants. At least according to most scholarly websites and Wikipedia. Of course, it includes way more than just elephants. Elephants themselves are a polyphyletic group that really doesn't have a scientific meaning. But that's for next time. I'm the Dark Master. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe for more content. So, I went to the local Repticon yesterday. It was pretty fun. It was really interesting to see all the different color morphs and species. Though I will say one thing before showing you what I recorded. It said the banner. It said that there'd be amphibians, reptiles, and arthropods. I looked. There wasn't a single amphibian in there at all. Of course, it makes kind of sense. They're kind of hard to transport, but still, kind of a bit of false advertising. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this thing.